Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor, and welcome back to another Gen 2 tutorial, rambling, whatever you want to call it. In the past, if you've been following a lot of my videos, I have talked about how I have tried many different screen capture utilities, and many of you out there have helped me out a lot in my endeavors from the very beginnings and such and such and so forth. I have messed around with using FFmpeg, VLC, record my desktop, and a few others. But one application I have found to be one of the best out of all of them that has simply just worked with 99.9% .9 success rate. And the reason why there's only a 0.1% that's failed on that is because you sometimes have to compile this to make it work in every distribution and that is of course simple screen recorder this right here that you see this has been one of the better and you can record in mp4 you can record in vorbis you know uh, webm many different formats so you can have it built now in every distribution i have had to compile this and in some cases in Debian they have the source code of course and some instructions to get the right packages to lay down same with Ubuntu and a few other distros but recently I ran across the ability to set this up using your portage and overlay utilities within Gen 2 and I wanted to discuss that because there are some things you need to do a little specific to make it work now first off, if you go into your browser of choice and you go to search on simple screen recorder, which is at the top there, we see that we get to the main page for simple screen recorder. And if you go to downloads, you can see that it talks about Ubuntu Arch. And then it says here that Anders Larsen has created a Gen 2 overlay that contains simple screen recorder and you can find it here so if we click on that that takes us to this and it then talks about the overlay for gen 2 linux packages the following packages are available in this overlay simple screen recorder and then it tells you how to install it it says the overlay is not official and not available within layman so we do have to do a few tweaks and this is why i chose this to talk about because there are some little things that we have to do. We have to make sure that this is exact because I found that line spacing does make a difference. It states in here that we need to modify etc layman, layman.cfg, and include the following line for overlays. And it should look something similar to these lines below if you don't use anything else. Now, as you can see, there is some spacing here and it is very important that we follow the same spacing because I have tried it without spacing and just adding it. I've had others try it without that and it has failed for them. So we go into here and we minimize that so we can see this a little bit better. And if we go ahead and do a nano dash W slash ETC layman layman dot CFG enter in there and we scroll down to our overlays area. Now this should look the same for most all of you. Right here we have our overlays. And you see here's our main project overlay. And we're adding of course the Anders Larsen GitHub to this. And as you can see there is that space that is right here so it lines up. Don't ask me why because I would have thought that you could have just put it at the end here. but I do make sure that that has the proper line spacing. So once you have added in that line that it stated from the website right here like this and saved your file, you then should be able to use layman. If you don't know what the commands are for layman, just type in layman and it's going to show you. Now if you don't have layman, let me give you a trick when you're installing layman. Let me just throw you what I am using here for layman on my merge because you're going to want to change your use flags
or layman. If you want to be able to use layman to its fullest capability, you want to make sure that the use flags for Bazaar, CVS, Git, Mercurial, and Subversion are enabled. Now to be able to do that, you need to make sure that you add an entry into your etc portage package.use file that says app dash portage slash layman space and have all those words or copy at least this portion of it into that file. And we're just going to go ahead and say no for now because we don't need to. And as you can see, there's the, if you just type in layman there, or if you type in layman dash dash help, I think it'll give you a little bit more information about those. Now once of course you've added that, you need to update those package lists and everything and synchronize it all. So uh, if you do, if you look here for instance, you've got a dash s or sync which is going to update the specific overlay. Um, dash a of course is a good useful one for adding, dash d for deleting, dash l to list the contents of the remote list and dash lowercase l that shows what you have listed on the short end. Now after you've done your synchronizations if you do a layman you can spell layman and we do the capital L that fetches all the lists. Now what you want to do here is scroll up to the A section, which is all the way at the top, of course, and make sure that you see Anders Larson as an available name. If you can see this line right here within your available externals, then you know you'll be able to add it. And you'll see too that it's using Git. Now you'll see Mercurial, Subversion, you know, that's why you want to make sure you build Layman so it supports those, otherwise, you'll get errors if you try to use an overlay that has that in there. So what we want to do is we want to add it so we would then type layman a Anders Larson hit the enter and of course I already have it entered so it should just add it and do its thing. If we do then to check to verify that it is in there we do a dash lowercase l, we will see I have Anders Larsen. I'm using Steam because I do have Steam installed for Gen 2. It does work very well. I've not had any problems. And I use the wirelay. Always be very careful when adding overlays to Gen 2. Remember that if an overlay has a package updated higher to a version that Gen 2 has decided is stable, it will try to grab that version of the package and that could hose or it could mess up all other applications. For instance, if it had, for instance, a, a multimedia overlay with a newer version of FFmpeg that it's trying to pull down, you could hose your whole system by installing a newer version of the FFmpeg or anything out there really that it's just not ready for. So always be careful that your packages are staying stable and that you're using the bare minimum out of your overlays because sometimes overlays just do not play well with a stable Gen 2 system. You've got to be very careful. There is your warning. Do not try this at home. Well, try this at home. Of course you're going to try this at home. All right. So before we added that, if we had done an emerge s and looked for a simple screen recorder, and you can try this beforehand, you would see that it comes back as nothing available. But now that we've added that, if we do an emerge s and we look for a simple screen recorder, just like that, it should come up and it says media video, simple screen recorder, and it looks like it's there. As you can see, I have the latest that it does have. Now, if you're wondering, is this really the latest, you can always do a layman dash s and it's going to fetch and synchronize everything that you have and make sure that those are all up to date in case he's updated it and if you do another dash s and look it's going to tell me if there's something new there 
Now there isn't, but in this case, now that you've verified that it's there, you can now do an emerge dash AV simple screen recorder. And it will bring up that package. And if it requires any dependencies, bring those up as well. Now, since I've already installed it, we see that it is working. We also see too that it now has proper use flags that you can set within this so that you can give it MP3 or Pulse Audio support, the Aura, Vorbis, VPX, you know, X264 for MP4 and et cetera, et cetera. And you can then also install whether or not you want the 32-bit version or the 64-bit. I think right now just have 64-bit enabled. But then you would say, yes, you want to install it. It installs, it has worked beautifully, makes it a lot easier. I prefer when using Gen 2, even though you can grab external packages and install them from scratch, I like to make sure that the Porridge system can manage those packages. It just makes it a little bit easier to do so. You know, we're going to tell it no because we already have it. But that is what you would do once you have done that. Then you would see that inside of here, if you started typing in simple screen recorder, that it is in the menu and that you can run it. You will be able to see that when it pops up, this is what we're seeing right now because we're in the record phase. And it also places a little icon down here that you can work with as well. Simple Screen Recorder has been a very good screen capturing. Works very well with my audio capturing and has done very well for many different distributions. And it is kind of nice to be able in Gen2 at least to be able to use a portage or e-build to build it. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you all run out there and grab Simple Screen Recorder, learn how to use Layman, and if you don't know how to use Layman, look for my overlays video. I don't want to do too much duplication about that, but look for the video in my Gen 2 and reviews for overlays because I'll talk about Layman, I'll talk about how to install it, set it up, and make it run because there's a few things that you need to do besides emerging the Layman package and also going into your make.conf and doing some editing to add a variable that you need for Layman to work correctly. So thank you very much for watching. If it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, I hope you enjoy it. Enjoy Simple Screen Recorder, and we'll chat with you later. Bye, guys.